is Channel 5 in Memphis on the Mississippi. WMCT, the showplace of the South. right along ringside. We are ready. Championship wrestling. And by golly, I'll tell you, love the looks of it, Davey, as we said earlier in the week. I'll tell you, two six-man tag team matches coming up today. We are going to have in here handsome Jimmy Valiant, Tojo Yamamoto, and the Dream Machine. They'll be on one side of the ring. And also, we're going to have uh, superstar Bill Dundee, Carl Fergie, Tommy Rich, much, much more coming up. It looks like a big day. You know, we had such a response, Dave, that uh, on, on showing some of the old great matches of Jerry Lawler and that sort of thing, that uh, I think everybody kind of likes to go down the nostalgia road. He did break his leg. He broke both bones about six inches below the knee in the right leg. And uh, a major event. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't think any of us deny. Maybe this man will deny about the tactics that Lawler uses and that sort of thing. But still, he did break his leg. It was an unfortunate thing, and as obviously a great wrestler in the background. We've asked uh, Jimmy, who long before he became the manager, as a matter of fact, was probably Lawler's closest friend and confidant. He uh, he it was at ringside before he ever became a manager because of his genuine interest in there. We've called him a cheerleader because he's there rooting Lawler on, of course, in the role of manager. Uh, he has been more active, if you know what I mean, in the, in the campaign of Lawler, but nobody, I think, is any closer to Jerry. And uh, regardless of what our personal feelings on it, we wanted to uh, go to, uh, so to speak, the horse's mouth and find out from Jerry's closest friend uh, what the conditions uh, of Jerry Lawler and his broken leg, uh, Jimmy. Are you finally through? Are you through? It's right, Jerry Lawler broke his leg. Big deal, man. Big deal. You know who broke his leg? I'm telling everybody, Jerry Calhoun, baby. Jerry Calhoun broke the man's leg. Oh, Jerry, well. But listen, I don't want to talk about that anymore. Listen, let me ask you something, man. If you have a prize racehorse, a thoroughbred, a champion, and he breaks his leg, what do you do to him? What do you do to him, Lance? Okay. You shoot him, right? Uh, Jerry Lawler uh, is no good to me anymore. Uh, he can't make me any more money, baby. He can't make me any more money. Tell you about somebody else, Paul Ellering, the world's strongest yeah. man. The world's strongest. You know what? Bo Derrick is a 10, right? He is the male Bo Derrick, baby, but he's a 15. He's the man with the most beautiful body in the world. And he also, to go along with that, the man also holds the world record in the power lift, 925 pounds. But last but not least, man, in my stable, handsome Jimmy Valiant, baby, the Southern Heavyweight Champion, handsome Jimmy. Yeah, the man who's the greatest attraction in the world. He is the greatest attraction in the world, and I'm the manager of the greatest attraction in the world. Okay, Jimmy, we've heard all about your stable in there. Uh, I never did get the answer to the question that I was asking you a little bit ago. Uh, you've told us all about your stable of the Iranian assassin and Paul Ellering yeah, and yeah, handsome yeah, yeah. Jimmy Valiant. And... But wait, one more thing. But the big news, baby, the big news right here is today, today, one of my three stallions, baby, is going to come the new king of professional wrestling. The new king of professional wrestling, oh. baby. It's either going to be the Iranian assassin, Paul Ellering, or, last but not least, handsome Jimmy Valiant, baby. And I'm going to show you what this guy's going to do right now. Yeah, yeah. Boy, you can dress so Eddie up, but it still don't help him out, does it, Lance, huh? <laughs> didn't I tell you something special was going to happen today, didn't I? Well, yeah, baby, the time has come right now because it's time for Jimmy Hart to crown the new king of professional wrestling right now. I know everybody's been waiting for it. I know you've been they, waiting for I it. I no, they've been, been holding their breath. But I've got a yeah. few things I'm going to put over here by old Dave. Now, Dave, I know Lance can't sing, so I had to bring a little music myself. So when I give you the word, will you punch the button, man, so we can have a little music when I bring the new 
uh, king of professional what wrestling out here. You're going to crown it. Hey, it's king. a Jimmy Hart show. That's what it is. I want you to listen to me. You know, I've got three men in my stable, like I said earlier. The Iranian assassin, Paul Ellering, and handsome Jimmy Valiant, the seven heavyweight champion, baby. Well, right now, it's time to crown the new king of wrestling. So if the people are ready, and all you jerks at home are ready, this is history. This is history in the making, Russell. Are you ready, David? If you don't push it up, we're ready. Put the microphone on. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, the new king of professional wrestling, Paul the King Ellerin! What? Paul Ellerin, can you hear me? Look at this man. It's a million dollar body, baby. Look at him. Look at him. Come on, Paul. Come around. Let these people see him. Look at him, girls. Look at him. The strongest man in the world. Yeah, the strongest man in the world. Come on, give me the flowers, Lance. Come on, we're going to do this right. Come on, I'll do it. Are you, yeah, I'll do it, so. man. I crown thee the new king, Paul the King Ellery. Whoa. Woo! You Look got at a this. short Nobody memory, Hart. That's baby. all come I can on. tell you. Oh, come on. Yeah. Come on, Russell. You knocked the crown off. I didn't knock come the crown off. Come on, man. Wake up. Look at this body. Look at this body. Come on. Come on, pull for him, Paul. Let me move this robe off just a little bit, man. Come on, this thing's in the way. Show these people these muscles, man. Show them the muscles. Yeah. This is your new king, He's Jimmy Hart. The new champion. The baby. new king. The new champion. Come on, show these people the muscles. Look at this, Come people. On, I didn't get much comment about the old muscles. king Come out of you. Look at it. Come on, show them okay. the pose, man. Look at the back. Woo! Is it great or is it great? Well, uh... Whatever you say, Jimmy, whatever you say. He went down, his knees turned to jelly. He was on Dream Street, the Dream Machine. <laughs> the Dream Machine put him out just like a light. Jerry Lawley, you are an egg-sucking dog. There ain't a gut in you, Jerry Lawley. The muscle of Charles Ellis, the quickness of Bob Lilly, the meanness of Joe Boogie, Woogie Green, do the fuck your chicken, but an Isaac Hayes got more soul than a broke gang shoe. Can you dig what I'm saying, last time? Yeah, Can you dig what I'm saying? <laughs> but where's Jerry Lawler? Where's Jerry Lawler? Jerry Lawler, there ain't no guts on you. You are just like Memphis, Jerry Lawler. You was built on a bluff. Hey, you something. Jerry Lawler, you ain't bad. You ain't bad, but where is he at? Now, see, you know what you got to say this week to defend him? Uh, he didn't have enough guts. He hey, I don't have to defend Lawler. He can do a pretty good job of defending himself, <laughs> as you're going to find out eventually. If I'll he tell did, you. how come he didn't come to his cousin's rescue? You know, that boy needs some stand back yeah. to fight that pain, fever, and inflammation. <laughs> he needs some stand back. That's what he needed. He lay in there. Special time, as a matter of fact, on this particular championship wrestling program. Sitting with us, obviously, is Jerry the King Lawler. In this uh, past week, Jerry, you made your debut in the area after being out for 11 months, and by golly, I'll tell you what, it was great to have you back. Well, it was great to be back, you know, for those 11 months. I've been like a little kid looking in a candy store that didn't have any money. <laughs> well, now I'm able to get in that candy store, and I, I, it was great to be back. Uh, the, the response from the fans was just unbelievable. You know, uh, uh, I know how I missed them for those 11 months, and, and, and they made me realize that, that I was missed for 11 months, too. It was just great being back uh, with people in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, Lexington, Kentucky, Nashville, Tennessee, Evansville, Indiana, all the people. It was just, it was just unbelievable. Well, um, you don't want to leave out your old hometown, and that is uh, Memphis, Memphis, Tennessee. Right. I think it was uh, incredible. Over 11,000 people gathered to see the King return into action there, and... Uh, it was something something else, as a matter of fact. We have uh, some scenes of the reception, and we thought you might be interested in seeing this. I know you are. Yeah, it's on.
kind of excitement, like I said, was there in, uh, uh, well, just all the cities. Evansville, Indiana was unbelievable. I've never seen so many people there. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky, the same situation. And it was just electricity in the air, you know. I hey, uh, Jimmy Hart's planning on breaking your leg again so you can be out for 11 months. Well, you know, uh, I got a few words I'd like to say about that. I, I'm sure that he's, that's what he had in his mind. He, he came up with this dream machine and, uh, the dream machine turned out to be a nightmare for Hart. It turned out to be a one-night wonder. You know, he had promised Hart he was going to get the job done. He didn't do it. Hart can go out and hire or put a bounty on my head, a price on my head, and hire as many of these stooges as he wants to. Look all over the country, Hart. Spend every last dime you've got and bring them all in because I'm going to go right through them if I have to, each and every one of them. I don't care if it's one, ten, a hundred. I don't care how many it is. I'll go right through them because I'm going to get to you, Hart. And just what you got that first week is just a small sample of what I've got in store for you. Because, Lance, I told you and I've told all the people, and I'm going to make this a promise, that I brought Jimmy Hart into the wrestling business. He was singing in bars in Memphis when I found him. And I befriended him. I, I, I gave the guy a break. I made him my friend, and, and, and uh, he gave me the shaft. And I'm not going to stand for it. So let me tell you something, Hart. Before it's over with, you're going to be back singing in these clubs if they'll hire a singer with no teeth and with scars all over his head because that's what you're going to look like when I get through with you. You know, I, uh, I got to tell you, Jerry, that I was, I was not only very pleased, I was a little bit surprised that in, in watching you in, in your first week back in action, you look great. I Boy, feel the great. The leg is 100%. You can forget about re-breaking the leg hard because, like the doctor said, it's stronger now than it ever was. So just forget about that. You better try to concentrate on something else. You know what? I'm a little bit surprised. That I saw you spending a lot of time today on the show showing old films of this musclehead Paul Ellering, and I can't understand your thinking. Well, we, we were thinking We've seen enough of him. I mean, you know, if they want to try to bring him back, he was the king when I was gone, but the real king is back. And, uh, you know, uh, I understand that all Ellering heard while I was gone was wait till the king gets back. Well, the king is back, and if Ellering wants to try a little bit of me on, he's welcome to it, too. Okay. No offense intended again. Tremendous to have you back, Jerry. And Thank we're just you. looking forward to seeing you in action and on and on and on. All right. Two days after my leg was broken there, I uh, uh, wasn't even really warm in the hospital bed. I turned on the TV, and I, I knew I hadn't had a call from Jimmy Hart, and, and uh, I just figured, well, something's wrong. I know he'll get in touch with me. I turned on the TV, and here is Jimmy Hart. And what is he doing? He's out there on TV. He's got my crown, and he's putting it on the head of Paul Ellering, telling everybody that uh, Lawler's like an old race horse when he bro he's broken his leg. You might as well shoot him because he's finished. And now I've got the new king of wrestling, Paul Ellering, here. Well, you know, uh, Paul Ellering dominated wrestling around this area for six or seven months. But I understand that every time he stepped in the ring, the fans were telling him, Paul Ellering, wait till the king gets back. And that's what I was thinking about. I thought about him for a long, long time. So I was ready for this match. I wanted it more than Ellering wanted it because I wanted to prove to him and prove to the fans that, uh, you know, I wanted to show them exactly who the real king was. So I just want to make this plain right now. I want you to know, Hart, that from now on, every time that I see you, whether you're in a match that I'm in or whether I see you walking down the street or in a restaurant or in a parking lot or whatever it is, every time that I see you from now on, I am going to beat the hell out of you. And now is no exception. <laughs> Jerry! Do it outside! Hey, come on, Jerry! Counting at him. He breaks and starts all over again. Jerry having been softened up by El Toro. And now, Lawler's got heart. Here comes the Turk. He's put down. El Toro after Lawler. And now he turns his attention to Jimmy Hart. Kevin Sullivan in the ring. Hooks Lawler's arm and nails Lawler. What is this? Sullivan. He says stop it. The referee stops it. Sullivan, Neal, and Lawler. Here comes Dundee in the dream machine. The 
Boston battler Kevin Sullivan came in the ring. I thought he was keeping El Toro and, and Turk off. While wow, uh, Lawler got hard, but he suddenly grabbed Lawler's arm, put him to the deck. And Lawler snaps down the top. Neil Sullivan, Hart jumps on his back. Lawler shakes him. Now Hart's the one left up in the ring. Hart gets out, Sullivan grabs his arm. Evidently, a total plot from Kevin Sullivan. So it's a no decision bout, Jerry Lawler, Kevin Sullivan, with Sullivan turning on Lawler. In the ring of the Coliseum, introducing the incredible Come to the first family's clan oh, meeting come here, Jimmy. Don't I tell ask me you for and sent you over here, right? Well, they can't get in the family. You can't get oh, in the family, no. baby. <laughs> here, let, let, well, wait a minute now. Let me tell you what I had on my mind. I was thinking the other day that hey, we, wait, we, we minute, before you can come to a family meeting, you got to get comfortable, and you look right, pretty on the way. You look come real hey, comfortable. Hey, hey, come come on, over here to be harassed. You need to loosen up, Jeff. Yeah. Old Keston Battler. Muscle man Kevin Sullivan, uh, have you got a dream match that you would like to express? First of all, Lance, I'd like to say thank you very much for coming to the first family's outing today. Yeah. I'm glad you loosened up. You know, later on we got somebody coming out of cake for Kevin. you, but forget about that now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've thought about this a lot, you know. You know, I got a guy here that's been a thorn in my side, Dutch Mantel. And I don't have to tell you, because everybody out there and everybody knows here how he's ran from me, how he's hid from me, you know, that shell shot idiot. I can't get him to stand I still one time. I know, thank you, you, Lance, okay. because you're here on okay. our family grounds. Aaron, we appreciate the opportunity to... Wait a minute, uh, wait a minute, excuse me, excuse me. Well, you didn't ask me about my dream, baby. My dream, what about my dream? Well, like it or not, I'm going to get Jimmy Hart. Because dream. if he gets a dream okay. and he's going to give it to me, then I want my dream. Okay, Jimmy, what would your dream match be? Excuse me. This is my dream. This is my dream, baby. I want to get Jerry Lawler into the ring. I want to get him in a boxing glove match. I want him to have boxing gloves on, baby, because you know in high school, who was the number one professional boxer? Not professional, but I call myself professional in high school, Jimmy Hart. Who won golden gloves? Jimmy Hart, baby. Oh. Come on, tell it like oh, it is. I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. I'm Stepping on his yeah, hands, did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, this Very is mine. Good. I would like to get Jerry Lawler in the green ring. He's got boxing gloves. Woo, woo, woo. What, what about what's in that punch over? <laughs> I want to get him in the ring with boxing gloves on. Number one. Number two. I want two special referees, which would of course be the Boston Battler. I'll do it, James. I'll do it. And last but not least, the pretty boy, Wayne Ferris. 
Two Here's special man, referees. Man. You got it, darling. Two Here's special man. referees, Lawler and Boxing Gloves. But I want the Southern Heavyweight Championship belt put up. For this reason, Lance Russell, Jerry Lawler came out here on TV and he told everybody, boy, Jimmy Hart, you've done the greatest thing in the world for me because bringing in the Hulk and he beat the Hulk. He beat Jack Briscoe, Dory Funk, Terry Funk, Jimmy Valiant, Austin Idol, I can go on. Well, that moved Lawler up in the rankings, right? Mm. Well, baby, if he has that match with me, then I'll win the match. And then he'll be down at the bottom again. Look at this, 18 inch arms, Lawler. Look at this, 18 inch, baby. Look at these biceps. Look at this body. Look at it. That's your deal, baby. Lawler, can you take it, baby? Boxing gloves, Southern Heavyweight Title Shop match. Plus, last but not least, my special referees, Sullivan and Ferris, baby. Come on, Lawler. Come on and get it, baby. Come on, head on. Boy, that is a dream, I gotta tell you. Okay, your typical fun-loving American family, and so as we say adieu to the first family of professional wrestling. Let's, let's take a look at it. You're coming to the ring, a former MWA World Heavyweight Champion. Additionally, he was Frankie the Bumper in Paradise Alley and is now pursuing a career in movies. Retired in time to his ranch in Texas. Entering the ring. First of all, I'd like to say that Jerry Lawler is a son of a jackass. He's a lover of chickens. He has a one-track mind the same way a hog does at supper time or slop time. He's got a one-track mind just as that hog does, but he's not concerned about slop. I want to tell you, Lance, what he's concerned about. The man is concerned about money and money alone. And within this area right here, he has got the fans on his side. And besides having the fans on his side, he has got the police 
on his side. And besides the police being on his side, he's got the officials on his side. And I would like to say this, he's got you on his side. This is a completely one-sided thing here, is I have got a date, I have got a time, and I have got a place. This is a personal invitation sealed right here to Jerry Lawler to ask him to meet me by himself with nobody else involved at an area that I know, he knows, and you will know, and I want you to bring the camera down there, but I don't want a referee. I don't want the police. I don't want the fans. I don't want money for this. What I want is I want to compete against Jerry. Lawler and I want to get him down and hold him down and I want to make him say to me personally Terry Funk you are the better man Terry Funk oh Terry Funk oh please let me up and let me go that's what I want to make him holler I want to see if he's got the guts to come down there the guts like I don't think a lot of people have around here. And I'm talking about the fans, Lance. I'm talking about you. Right. I'm talking about a lot of different people. But Lawler does not have the stinking guts to come down there where no money is involved, where nothing is involved except personal pride. And I do have Texas pride, believe me. Yeah, well, there it is. Take this. Okay, I will take it. What well, we're uh, here today for the uh, wild. He, he wants no fans, nobody else. I wish you'd take a look at it. I've already looked You've at it. You've already opened it. Yeah, I look for the challenge. Well, you know, sharing the information <laughs> right there. Take a look at that from Terry Funk. Hmm? Okay. I well, see it. I see it. No, <laughs> that, no re mean? I just want a reaction to it. We've got something. If it doesn't, all we've lost is a, is a little time on it. So, let's see. I guess we got enough light and everything. We can uh, we can pick it all down. And what we'll just, you know, I don't even know that they're either one of them going to show up. Yeah. Okay. Pardon me. Let me get rid of the cigarette. Give me a count, don't we? This is Lance Russell standing in the middle of an empty Mid-South Coliseum. I think most wrestling fans know that Terry Funk, the former NWA World Heavyweight Champion, issued a challenge to Jerry Lawler to meet man to man. Uh, of course, Funk had accused Lawler of having Homer decisions uh, in his battles with uh, Terry Funk previously and with brother Dory Funk Jr. and, and so forth. Uh, he said, no fans, no officials, no police, nobody, you and me. Uh, I guess you just have to call it what he's looking for is a shootout. He made the challenge, asked me to deliver the challenge publicly so that it would be on record that he had challenged Lawler. Uh, Jerry Lawler uh, later said, set it up. And so here we are. We're in the Mid-South Coliseum, 11,300 empty seats. And that's all that will be here to witness this particular bout, with the exception of myself and cameraman Randy West. Uh, Funk asked that there be a camera and a tape crew here so that we would be able to have a record of his demolishing Lawler in the event that it takes place. It's right now 10 minutes to 1. The time that was set on it was 1 o'clock. Neither of the participants are here at this time. We will just have to wait and see. If it takes place, you'll have a record of it. If it doesn't, uh, then you will never see this. Uh, okay, let's go on it. Coming into the Mid-South Coliseum now, it is now a couple of minutes past 1 o'clock. Uh, Terry Funk, who initially issued the challenge, is, is coming into the Coliseum. And Lance, Lance. Hey, yeah. I'm here. I'm ready to wrestle. Where is Lawler? I told well, you that he... the 
didn't hey, have enough Ken, guts minute, to come on this down is, here. I this, said well, wait a second. that the man this, has everybody on his side. We Lance. would like to use this if it takes place on later on, so please watch your language, will you? Because for crying out loud, we can't use a thing with you swearing like that. I don't give a just a little after one o'clock right now, just anyhow. A little so after just one watch it and please well, let's try to go watch ahead. it. Get him ring in and go ahead and count him out. I'm not count counting. Out. I'm not the referee right in this thing. Count him out. You asked now. me to bring the camera. You count him out. Of the hey, come on. Right. Well, listen. Okay, you proved your point on the all thing. Your enough. All right. I've heard enough of your. I've heard enough of the from the people of Memphis. I've heard enough about how good this man is supposed to be. Well, you j it's just a little. He may have gotten tied up it's in traffic or something like it's that. I don't know. Clock right now. Yeah. Why don't you think, sir? You're on his side all the time. Hey. Why don't you go ahead and come up in here? I'd I'm like not. To listen, no, I'm not I'm interested in that. I'd like to have a little practice with you. Will you knock that stuff off? I'd like now. to have a... Look, you're the one you that... Tell me what hey, hey, come on. Okay, now look, Terry. You asked me I'm to come a down here. And an I athlete, understand. and you treat me with hey, respect. Hey, well, wait. Just, I you didn't... Treat me with okay, respect. I didn't... I wasn't meaning anything personal about it, except give the guy a chance. There, over here, yeah, Randy. Now, look who's there. Well, if it isn't a clown... Okay, I'm going to get over here and get... I'm going to get... Hey, Mahler! Come on up here. I'm going to break your crown. I'm going to break his crown, Lance. Look at that fool. Look at that idiot. Don't you realize that there's nobody here? You jackass. And Terry Run! Funk standing Come completely Come wide on! open. Come on! This is awful. Come on! Come on! Ask him, I see it. Him. Yeah. Ask him! Ask him! All right. Ask Come on, him! Terry. All right. Ask him! I got the microphone over here. You ask him? Wallet. Then you want this? Put the ape. Come on. Hey. Come on. Come on, Lala! Put that thing on. Come on, Terry. Come on, get his eyes! I got his eyes! Come on! I got his eyes! Come on, Terry. Come on, Terry. Don't tell me! You try to get in here! I feel like I'm going to Terry! Lawler, fighting his way back, has just slammed Terry Funk. Kicked him right in the elbow where he had it. Terry Funk is down now. Lawler back on his feet. Lawler picks up that stick that... Uh... <laughs> okay. Terry, can we... Just take it on out and we'll talk about it later. Lawler is not here. No, I can't say it any plainer than that. He Where is he? He's in Florida. He's I'm going to tell you something. Let me tell you one thing. I am the meanest man in professional wrestling. And you're on Lawler's side. I'm not on Lawler's side. Anymore. I just the, don't want the trouble with you. The referee's on Lawler's side. You idiots are on Lawler's side. The airplane people are on Lawler's side because they informed him that I was coming here. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I am going to take Lawler. And I'm Come on, Terry. Okay, okay. And I'm not him now. Uh, this area is horse country. This area is horse country. And believe me, I am going to be the biggest set around. Okay, we'll talk to, uh, talk to you about it later. Terry Funk, please, yeah. Get, move him out now. I'll tell you what we better do. Concentration, yeah, Eddie. Let her explain. Okay. Uh, this is to introduce the black diamond known in Mexico as Demente Negro. He does not speak English, but which is to present uh, Jerry Lawler with a plaque symbolic of the uh, Mexicans, uh, Mexico City's most popular uh, TV wrestler. Please extend your courtesy, Salvador Luteroff. Okay. Uh, well, 
exactly. Let me, uh, I don't know exactly, how to, our championship wrestling is on the cable all over Mexico in there. Uh, that uh, it was the first time that ever a non-Mexican has been voted the most popular, and of course Lawler was. And uh, coming up uh, uh, to make the presentation was the winner last year. I must say that in, in his own country, in Mexico, uh, this wrestler is, well, he is, he is the king of the country down there, Demente Negro, and uh, they call him Casa Grande, the big house. And uh, right here. Have to wear it? Huh? Yeah, just slip it on there. And let's see what... Numero uno. Huh? Numero uno. Numero uno. Here. There he is. <laughs> How's it look, huh? Senor de King. <laughs> right in there. Indicative of, of the win. Okay. There it is. Jerry Lawler, the voted the most popular wrestler in... Hey, hey what the hell? Hey. Hey, come on. Hey! Yeah, Hector, tell him in Mexican just to get out of here. Turned around. Or Lawler rocking idol. He staggered, but Lawler hadn't finished him. The king on the second rope himself. He didn't miss it. One, two, three. He beat him. Seconds, the winner, Jerry Lawler, the new international champ. Right in Idol's face came the fire after the match. Up the whole place. Get, me, get, me, get, me. get these guys. Eddie K, come on, Jerry. Get out of here with that stuff. Eddie, get in here and get some of this stuff. Now, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous, Eddie. Get him up. Come on. Oh, you're messing this thing up. Will you please get out of here? Hey, come on, you guys. I know. kind of funny. <laughs> Let's take it. Here comes Dundee. He grabs Hart. He turns to Gibson. Dutch Mantel. Brought in here. With 
whatever's in there. Green bails out of the ring. Waller out of there after him. It's molasses. And more feathers. Come on, Jay! Hey, that's enough of that now. Come on, get him out of here. Come on, Calhoun. Get him back. Oh, Billy. Go. Oh, there's Doug. Get out of here. You got your Come on, Green. Come on, Come on. You have him. You won. Boy, that's something terrible. Okay, I'll tell you. Let's just let's just go to a break and forget all about the thing. Yeah, take a break. He's the toughest man there is alive. Where's close from a wildcat's hide? He's the king of the jungle jive. Look at that king man go. There he goes. Look at that cape man go. He sure is hip, ain't he? Like what's happening? Well, there he is, Alley Oop Dream Machine. He had his ups and downs, uh, as you well saw there. <laughs> and sometimes uh, was like that comic book character, the Dream Machine, uh, who is the uh, current Southern Heavyweight Champ, as a matter of fact. And uh, Jimmy Hart. What's wrong with you, man? What the hell is the matter with you? I'll beat your shit, get out of here! Get out of here! You know what I mean? I'm about to move! I'm about to move! I'm about to move! Lala, you will be tired and feathered. You will be tired and feathered. Coco Ware counting both wrestlers down. Donovan trying to get the dream up. up the dream nails him one two three and stun jerry the king lawler has been defeated and i'll make you a deal why don't me and you team up and be a team okay and they ain't they ain't a team they ain't a team in the country that can beat us and you keep the southern belt and hey we'll be back a Boy, well, that might friend. be the answer to the first family right there. <laughs> I think you ought to bury the hatchet and That's get great, together. Right? What a tag team. You keep the belt or whatever, okay? Can they change the card, put Dutch and I against somebody else like Hart and the first family or something like that? Well, Jerry, of course, I think that's open to negotiations, and uh, promoter Eddie Marlin is no fool. He would love to have Lawler and Mantel together, so I can't say it, but I would certainly say that uh, it's a money business, and by golly, he Let would... Let me ask these people, do you think that there's any team around that could beat myself and Dutch Mantel? Well, I think everybody agrees Show them right here. that it would be a super... Oh, come on! the referee for in the very act of shaking hands Mantell drops on him with the elbow no no way you've got to be kidding two three count Dutch I've seen a lot of lousy things in there but that's the lousiest thing I ever saw involved in anything involved with you excuse me Lance I think this belongs to me and somebody needs to hip on to find a way out there boy I'll tell you well, Dutch Mantel, in a, in a situation, just pulled the lowest thing. I don't like being second to nobody and nothing. Jerry was obviously your first choice, so you just go back and talk to the king and see what he's going to say about it. No, he ins Bill, he insulted me. I don't well, no, I'm making my first public offer. I want to manage, Bill Dundee. Bill, come here. Well, apparently... I can spend any amount of money I can make you a star. 
Oh, no. Now, I don't want him to insult me again, Lance. Well, Jimmy. Jerry. That's a big one, Lance. That's a big one. I'm coming to you, Elizabeth. I'll be the one with no contract in my hand. Lance, oh. I don't want him out here again insult me. Do you mean that I didn't get the contract offer, Jimmy? Now, let me tell you something, Jerry. You came out here last week. You made fun of my shoes. You made fun of my clothes. This man has... I thought you had class, but you don't. Oh, Jimmy. You now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bill Calm down. Class. Calm down a little bit, Jimmy. Now, don't get so excited out here. I didn't make fun... <laughs> wait a minute. Now, Lance... Now, wait a minute. Lance, fill of this suit. Did your mother dress you this morning? This is a heavy wool suit. It must be 90 degrees outside. She put you in a winter suit today like this. Now, no, if, you don't, if you want some respect, come down here and act like an intelligent human being. Don't come I down here like a little wimp like hey, this listen, and let I've your mother class, dress you. Jerry. You don't have any class. Well, you well, come he comes out here talking now, about his mother. Minute. That's a big joke, man. Don't come out here like a little kid. If you're going to be like a man, don't come out here talking about your rich mother and all of this stuff. Is that right or not? Come on. We don't want to hear it, man. Now, wait a minute. Now, Lance, I come out here and I try to do something serious. I'm being serious. At first, he comes out here. He makes fun of my shoes. He makes fun of my clothes. Well, and it done me. I make this man a public offer. I can get him some publicity. I can do something for him. You don't realize what I can do for you. I've got oh, access yeah. to as much money as I want. He has. He isn't going to get the chance. But you are. If you want to take it, but you turn me down. I'm just. I'm Jimmy Cornett. I get what I want. I'm not used to being treated this way. I'm just. Oh, wait, a minute. All right. You see this? You see this right here, Dundee? Come here. You see this? Oh, a little temper. You see this? Laura, that was your name, Dundee. That's yours. I'm sick of being treated this way. I'm fed up with all of you. If you know what, I can do something. Well, our guest, uh... I believe you made him mad. Do you think you made him mad? I think he got mad at I him. think that was a classic temper know. tantrum, don't you? His mother will probably be upset. I'm oh, just... That's too you bad. guys are something. The king and the superstar. We're going to take time out and we'll be back with Southern Tag information for you in just a moment. Oh, He's going to try to win it right here. Two. And that's how close he got. The referee's hand was starting down on the third one. And Jimmy Cornette now getting the wrath of the referees turned in his direction. Dutch goes for that, the back of that leg. Hammers Lawler back into the corner. Lawler takes a shot. Resists that head slam on the turnbuckle. With 15 minutes passed, 45 minutes to go. Lawler now has the Dutchman back in the corner. Dutch's knees buckle. The ropes held him up. This time he's down. Lawler hopping up to that second rope. Boy, and he dive bombed him with that right hand. Bam, bam, Lawler pounding on him. Dutch sinks down to the canvas, and the referee tells Lawler, open those fists up. Lawler says, how about it? One more time. Yes. And Mantell throws Lawler off right into referee Jerry Calhoun, whose wind knocked out of him. His knee is hurt. Mantell is down on the mat. Cornette saying to the referee, get up, get up. Mantell covering Lawler. And, and Cornette trying to help the official up and say, go count him. The referee says, ring the bell. <laughs> referee Jerry Calhoun called for the bell at 1626 and holds the hand up. What was it, Jerry? It's Dutch Mantell is disqualified for Jimmy Cornette coming in the ring. The, the referee has said that Mantell is disqualified for Cornette coming in the ring. Cornette came in to help the referee up for all the referee knew. 
He's the one that knocked Lawler down. He's over screaming, waving his arms, shaking his sailor's cap. He is having a tantrum. And the Dutchman is standing there doing a double slow burn, friend. He just lost a shot at the Southern heavyweight title. Cornette down on the mat over to Dutch, and Dutch is looking at him saying, as if to say, you fool, what were you doing in the ring? And Cornette going through all of it. As he's explaining to Dutch, all he was doing was trying to help out. <laughs> Matt Dell just looks at the crowd. And Cornette with gestures is explaining to Dutch and Dutch saying I told you to sit in a corner I um, uh, can verify the fact that it is certainly serious that gals are up there trying to take you apart at uh, least inferior to men because uh, when it comes to things like uh, uh, cooking and cleaning washing the potatoes scrubbing the carrots raising the babies mopping the floors uh, they have it all over men I believe that but uh, when it comes to the wrestling when it comes to them getting in the wrestling ring they're, there's nothing up there. They're all oatmeal north of the eyebrows. They're all, uh, you know, we Tina for brains, you know what I mean? I will pay $1,000. I'll take on anybody who wants to come in that ring and volunteer. I don't think you can do it. You know why? Because I'm going to send you back to the kitchen where you belong. I'm going to have you scrubbing the potatoes and washing the, washing the carrots. Because that's where you belong, ladies. Well, as it turned out in Memphis, they had... I don't know, maybe a dozen or something like that, uh, volunteers, and boy, the crowd ended up with Foxy. Now, Foxy is a very large lady. Andy Kaufman just barely got out of there with his money and his hide. He almost had too much to handle in Foxy. At the beginning of that, if you look at it closely, you could see she was even taking advice from the great Jerry Lawler. Even the great Jerry Lawler, with his advice, she still couldn't do it. Hi there. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the program, and a fine program it is indeed, folks. Let's get on with it, shall we? On April 5th, 1982, in Memphis, Tennessee, Andy Kaufman, the actor, comedian, and intergender wrestling champion, had his first wrestling match with a member of his own sex. The opponent was a very serious wrestling favorite named Jerry Lawler. Here now are the results of that match. Lawler! With a pile driver. Only the second move by Lawler. And bang goes Kaufman. It's going to be a disqualification. Danny Davis, his manager, not believing it. Jerry Lawler, six minutes and 50 seconds with a pile driver, has been disqualified. The winner by disqualification. myself this $500 sport coat. I'm going to slide out all this gold and I'm going to show the people right here in Memphis just exactly what a real world champion looks like. I know they're going to enjoy it just as much as I enjoy showing them. Well, I, uh, you mentioned something there and 
and we'll get into this important thing. I do want to say that that has got to be one of the most stunning watches I've ever seen, this beautiful gold watch that Rick is wearing. And that's entirely aside the point, but uh, I got to bring it up because it is unique. Eddie? About Heartlands. Okay. I want to, you're right, this is an exciting day. You know, I got here early. I was supposed to wrestle. I see, you know, you, they don't have my name on the list. No, it's, it's not. A... They had me down against Pat Hutchison. Now, you and I know you could beat Pat Hutchison, couldn't you, Lance? Hey, come on. So I got dressed, and uh, Eddie Marlin says, you're wrestling Pat Hutchison? I said, scratch me off the list, Eddie. It's no use me even wasting my time. But I would like, before I leave today, I would like to have the opportunity to uh, shake hands with Ric Flair, the world heavyweight champion. If, you haven't uh, I see met that he's... Uh, Rick before? Oh, I... I just said I would like to shake hands with Rick oh, Flair. Well, uh, I'm going to tell you something about Rick McCord. Now, this is, I like Rick McCord, and this is no offense to Rick at all, but Rick is a young wrestler. He's fairly inexperienced, and I think it's safe to say that Rick has never won a match here on this television. Is that, am I correct? I don't remember it if he did. I'm not know. saying that as a knock to, uh, to Rick. I'm saying it because the man is inexperienced. If you don't mind, why don't you and I go in the ring? Now, listen, like I said, no, wait. <laughs> listen, wait a minute, Rick. I think it's the obvious, folks like that. It's obvious to you that even I'm not in your caliber. Nobody in this area is in your caliber. So when you beat me, you're going to impress these people. They will be impressed when you beat Jerry Lawler right in that ring. Right there. You want to wrestle the world champion? Don't you think anybody wants to wrestle the world champion? Hey. It's an honor for me, Rick. I would love to wrestle. It would be. What, what kind of a time limit do we have in these matches? Uh, ten minutes. One ball, ten minute uh, time limit. You want ten minutes of my time? I would love it. Is that all right with you? Non-title. Get in the ring, brother. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Rick Flair has said he will go on a non-title, one fall, ten minute time limit bout. Let me ask you one more thing. I know, I realize I'm taking a lot of your time here and it's very valuable, precious time, but since, since I or uh, Rick McCord up there, nobody in this area is in the same caliber of wrestler as you, and that's true because you are the one and only world champion since we've only got 10 minutes, why don't we really make this interesting? Why don't we make everybody out there at home excited, all of these people really excited, make this the most interesting, exciting show that there's ever been on wrestling, and put the world title up for just the 10 minutes. No big deal. You probably beat me in 30 seconds. You wouldn't be You're the world champion. Little, you wouldn't be putting a little of that country jive on me now, would you? No, no, you know, Lance, would I jive the world, the world, the world, world champion? The world champion never puts his title on TV. Number one, I don't make $500,000 a year, and I don't fly around in a big jet defending that title on local TV programs, you understand? I but I'll tell you what I'm going to do, because you're a big deal around here, because I even saw you on TV the other night. Boy, you were a real big deal the other night. Tell you what I'm going to do for you, what I'm going to do for you, and I'm going to do for Memphis, because I think it's long overdue. You get in that ring, the belt will be on the line, and I'm going to pull you through your hoop, Daddy. Mm, you heard it right there. Ric Flair said he would put the title on the line. Running on it. Because Flair going after Lawler. This is an extended uh, portion. A, another match getting underway as Ric Flair says, I want five more minutes. shots from Ric Flair. He's driven back into the corner and the King right now being brutalized. Look out! There's that Lawler move and he nails Flair. Lawler knuckling Ric Flair in this extra five minutes, this player holding on, Dave. Oh, oh he almost pitched him right over that ring post into the monitor and on the floor, and player slammed. Look at Lawler go to town. Player oh. taking a breather out here, getting out of the ring. Lawler. It's been all Lawler in this uh, second five minutes. Flair grabs his uh, his belt and 
heads out of here. Now you, Mr. Russell, I complimented you. I said you were a real man. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. I can't help but believe deep down inside you didn't have something to do with this. And because you think Jerry Lawler is a big deal, you're gonna have the privilege of watching this too. Because we're gonna bring in men from all over the world. And so keep your mouth shut. The ladder's nine feet tall, brother. You was no, up the I don't, top. I don't now you're down right. the bottom. You never no, beat Kern. No Did trouble, he beat Kern? Now, Let's not have any trouble out no, here, please. You we're guys. not going to have any no, trouble. No, no. Uh, come on, Dutch. Dutch. Director and just really took uh, took charge over there. Oh goodness, that was 1950. I believe okay. it was, yeah. I think it was, it was 1959 or 60. Okay. One of the things that uh, I'm sure probably nobody knows this other than me and because you told me is that you were responsible for a creation of, of somebody that became really, really popular in the Memphis area, and that was Savad. Is that right? Uh, yeah. We, we put uh, fantastic features on at 6 o'clock on Saturday. It was one of those uh, things at the time we had... ABC was kind of in its infancy, and we had no really major programming in the time period, and so we thought we'd experiment. We needed uh, to horse around with something, and we put on in prime time fantastic features with Watson Davis, who was Savad. Spelled and Davis, spelled backwards. Backwards, right. right. And um, I think the opening to fantastic features, which we shot in Overton Park in Memphis, uh, probably was the most classic identifying things. We had some of the worst class G movies on it. for your enjoyment and edification. Another lively one from our monumental morgue of monstrous motion pictures. Son of a gun, Jerry. <laughs> but I love Savad. Oh, if he's yeah, out there Savad watching, he's, he was just terrific. Yeah, Watson is a super guy. Uh, you were a charming young man to begin with. Jerry sent in, and I don't know how many of you have heard this story, but Jerry sent in uh, just mailed in, I don't know what prompted you to do it, but you just mailed in uh, some sketches yeah. of the wrestling matches, and they were very good. Uh, you were about uh, 15 or something like that, 16 at the time, somewhere well, in there. How about, I, I can't believe that you still have these, but hey, while we're talking I, here, I do let's understand. show a few of these uh, old sketches here. I, I guess, Lance, what, what prompted me to do it, I just wanted to see, uh, or hope to see some of, my, some of my artwork there on television. I would go to the matches every Monday night and uh, watch, of course, as a, being a big fan, watch the matches, and then I would go home and draw a picture or caricature like that you're looking at now uh, that, you know, uh, sort of told the story of the matches. And oh, then, that some of these names bring back some memories, too, in oh, there yeah, as you the, look down the, all the there. Tojo Yamamoto's and the Gentleman Saw Weingross yeah, and those guys. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I just, uh, at that time, you used to, on the show every week, you used to go back and, and tell the people the results yeah, the of results last week's matches. the results of last Monday night's matches and then you held up the picture and when uh, and I called I called your home and ultimately uh, you came down dressed up in your 
Sunday go to meet and suit and uh, we introduced Jerry on the air and it became a weekly thing and so when we did the Monday results we had these marvelous uh, sketches that you had done as, as they're looking at and I remember I remember I was so pleased or so excited to be on television uh, I was I was at the time working as a sack boy at a Hoganot supermarket on Summer Avenue and I got on there boy and I plugged it I said yeah I work yeah. <laughs> you know I thought that was great listen let Posure, act like a so-called gentleman. I'm sitting about four feet away from a punk that I'd like to punch your stinking lights out. Hey, hey, okay. hey listen. Now, you guys agreed to come out. Both of you punch me. Punch it. Hey, hey, Billy. Both of you said you'd come out here. Now, you said you'd come out here. Wait punch me on the nose. All right, all right, now, listen. Just wait till Monday night. Come on. You couldn't do it the last time, and you ain't going to do it now. I said you'd come out here and not give any trouble. Now, sit down. I was sitting there like a gentleman. He's the one that opened his big mouth. Not me. Both of you just Okay, there. come on. Now, just hold it. Monday night, you'll get a chance to do it. Now, please, Jerry, let's not have yeah, any yeah, of this. Hey, not me. Well, He's the one too. going like the spoiled Oh. Uh, all right, let me Lally just... All right, you want to... We can't stand it. Let me just tell you exactly why this match came about. First of all, and I'll tell you why it was signed. Uh, probably a lot of the people don't realize. I'll tell you why this match was signed last week. First of all... There's now the you're punk. talking about the loser leave town. I'm talking town about night. the loser leave town. You're looking at a punk right there that cost me not only my international title in a match with Ken Patera, but cost me five thousand dollars. Lance Russell, Dave Brown, right along the ringside. Boy, I'll tell you what, we are ginned up for a day of action on Championship Wrestling. We David. are ready today. Craig Carson, Carl Fergie going to be in here to face the International Roughnecks, the Moon Dogs, in our opening match of the day. The Destroyers will be going against Rick Morton and Robert Gibson, the Rock and Roll Express. All right. Then we'll have the fabulous one, Steve Kern and Stan Lane in a tag team match. Yes, sir. It's not all. 
The Bruise Brothers with Jimmy Hart, and Hart says he's going to have some information. Yeah, information. Get information about New the information. Bruise Brothers today. They will be here. Then we will have Big Duke Myers and the Ace of Spades in here as a tag team. They should be a big, formidable tag team, but that's not all. Expiration of time match today. Don't miss this one. You're going to want to hang around because Chief Lone Eagle, weighing in at 96 pounds, will be going against Tiny Tom, weighing in at 99 pounds. All right. I'll tell you what. Fast action. Lots more than that. We're going to get it all in. We better get at it. We'll take time out and be back in just one moment. Jackie Fargo's fabulous work. Deep current, Stan Lee. Let's take it a little of this right now. for a tag. Steve Kern was on the other side of the turn of the uh, turn post. But he got the tag. He grabs the enforcer. Knee drop. And a count of two and three. That's it. Well, I'll tell you, in a good win it was indeed. Hey, do you think, Dave, if we uh, hats, it would kind of do the same thing for us it's done for the boy? <laughs> There's going to be any high hats around. It's going to be first class, and it's going to be who I pick. <laughs> Somehow I doubt it. Dogs and a heart. They're out here ripping the coats up. Stan and Steve coming after them. The bout had just started. The Moon Dogs tearing the coats of the fabulous ones up. Now they're beating on them with those big bones. Steve busted down there. Stan Lane over in front of the desk. Yeah, why don't you get these animals out of here? But I guess it still applies a famous baseball line of there's no joy in Mudville. There's no joy in Memphis, at least in a lot of quarters, because Nick Bockwinkle still owns the Southern Heavyweight Championship. Jimmy Hart, you had a lot to do with it. Well, you know, I think the famous line is do unto others, Jerry, as you have them do unto you, man. You know, this is probably the greatest moment of my life right now. Because you see, Jerry Lawler, a couple of months back when you were facing Kamala and James J. Dillon with your hair on the line and the belt on the line and the winner to get a world shot against Ric Flair. Who came to your rescue? Jimmy Hart. Who won that belt for you, baby, and saved your hair? Jimmy Hart did. And what did he do? He got on TV and he laughed and he made fun of me and he said, hey, Jimmy, I used you, baby. I used you. Well, nobody uses me. But you know what I did, Jerry Lawler? I used this man right here to take away from you the Southern belt and also the shot at Ric Flair for the world belt. <laughs> Well, Nick Bockwinkle has done it. Jimmy Hart's happy. He's the man that has the Southern belt, and of course that means it's a Ric Flair deed. Now, I don't want to get into any personal arguments, and if uh, Mr. Uh, 
fact that Mr. Lawler has made enemies in this part of the country with a number of people by the way he's conducted himself business-wise, and as it turns out, what goes around comes around. And now, after three times out uh, to the post, you have failed, Mr. Lawler. You have taken and made the effort three times, and in three efforts, you have not regained the Southern Heavyweight Championship. Now, I stand before you as the AWA World's Heavyweight Champion. I stand before you as the Southern Heavyweight Champion, and consequently, what this has brought about, and for all you little cretins humanoids out there, you people here in the greater part of the Memphis area will not see Mr. Flair put up the NWA title against yours truly, the Southern Southern heavyweight champion and the AWA heavyweight champion, he will have to defend the NWA crown, which I have for years been chasing these people to try to put it up against me, to try to see who is the true and the one and the only real champion. This battle, this fight, this match, this contest will take place, but not here. It's going to take place, as far as I'm concerned, on the West Coast, in either San Francisco or Los Angeles. You mean my that hometown. Memphis, after all of the support and the expectations of seeing the he Southern Heavyweight Champion go against Ric Flair will not have the opportunity to see that match here. I hate to say that your people have been deluded into believing that anything that Mr. Lawler said and did, and no matter what part of the country he's gone and signed contracts, I hate to say that he's let you down, but it's just about what it amounts to. He could have gotten a match against Mr. Flair here, but it takes a man of my magnitude to carry three championships, three titles, three belts. I'll have to get extra luggage just to haul these around so that, yes, the poor Cretanous humanoids here, no. I acquiesce not to them, but only to myself. And it is going to be Southern California or San Francisco that that bout takes place. So, Mr. Lawler, I guess I can only say goodbye. And uh, I don't know, maybe after I win Mr. Flair's belt, we may take and either retire this or I may give it back to the championship committee and they may even have to have a tournament because it'll be so impossible for me to get into this part of the country to defend that belt let alone the world's heavyweight title Dick Bockwinkle, the world uh, AWA world champion and also the AWA southern heavyweight champion taking his belts and heading back to Beverly Hills California slam back down and he pulled the referee over but Calhoun again is still not with it. Bockwinkle is counting himself. He's picking Jerry Calhoun up. Lawler puts Bockwinkle down. One, two, he's got it. the new world champion. I can't get the mic up. Oh, we love it. Unbelievable. The crowd absolutely stunned. Lawler, the champion. He beat Nick Bockwinkle. <laughs> the king did it. He defeated Nick Bockwinkle. The time was 19 minutes and 20 seconds. 1920, and the new champion is Jerry Lawler. That is probably going to be the biggest lie you ever told in your life. The referee counted it one, two, three. Champion, I've seen you in great fights, but he beat you one, two, Come three. On, get off of it. You gotta be kidding me. I'll be here from pillar to post. This is what I have consistently said. The officiating in the South is totally prejudiced. And tonight was an example in... Uh, he counted uh, one, two, uh, three, Nick. He had you down on the mat and one, two, you three. You've been at this microphone long enough. Who are you trying to jack around? Well, I saw. No, you saw he what? He counted one, yes, two, you three. Did. did your eyes, you have four of them, I notice, see anything else? Or don't the glasses go to the other side of the ring? I don't know what you're referring oh, you to. I saw the shoulders to. down. 
you saw the shoulders down. The damn bottom rope in this part of the country is six inches higher than regulation any place else. Which means my feet had to be up there on the balcony. Now come on, I'm asking you. You're not. The loss, the loss is there. These cretinous humanoids who suffer from cranial anal impaction six and a half days out of the week, I am sure will send their tens of thousands of letters to Stanley Blackburn saying he beat him right in the middle of the ring. Now, if anything, anything happens to the tape of this match, then I hope we don't have We've a Nixon, a Nixon doctoring job here. I hope we don't have that. Because if these people accept it, then they are showing how cheap they are in class, in attitude, and in style of living. Because if Lawler takes that as a victory, he's the cheapest man I've ever known in sports. And if these fans back him, likewise for them, likewise for you, and likewise for everybody here in the South. This issue is not resolved, and you are looking at the world's heavyweight champion. You are talking to him, and Stanley Blackburn, I am sure, will go along with what I've said. Nick, I gave you more class it's than that. Horrible. He beat you right in the middle of the ring. Oh, there. boy. Are you showing your lack of class by accepting that cheap so-called victory and saying he's the world's heavyweight champion? Lance Russell, grow up. Why don't you move north or out west to California? Michael and Lawler, who are both... Through the vicious 10 minutes of it, both stunned, they hit the deck hard, and Lawler, and hard up out of the chair, gets away from Dundee. Dundee grabs him by the waist, while Lawler turns Bockwinkle over, he's got him! <laughs> but the referee, trying to get hard back from the ropes, and Lawler still got him covered. He can't get a pin. Lawler goes over and blast Hart loose. What is this? Here is Jimmy Hart on here. And Jerry Lawler, we are dumbfounded with Jimmy Hart with no mask. And Lawler was rolled up one, two, three. And the winner is Nick Bockwinkle in 11-22. The world heavyweight title goes to him. I don't believe it. I can't understand it. What is this? keep a job or oh, something baby, steady yeah, on just television. So stupid, hey, baby. All he does I picked the little up. phone up and I called him and I yeah. said, hello, is Indy Coppin there in Hollywood? And the people said, who's calling? I said, Jimmy Hart, and she got him to the phone and I told him what I had in mind. And I said, Andy, I said, you're mad at Lawler. He almost put you out of your whole show business career. And he said, yeah, I'm mad. And I said, well, I'm mad too because he burnt my face. He tried to break my hand. He tried to do it all to me. But I said, let's don't be mad, baby. Let's just get even. Let's just get even, man. But you know what's so tragic about this thing? I just wish there was a couple of people that could share this with me, Lawler. Your daddy and Sam Bass, baby, because I wish they were here with it, baby. Uh, Woo, because it is the greatest day of my life. The greatest day of my life, baby. Hey, will you just shut up a minute? I hey, talk no, 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 no. You shut up. You don't don't ever tell me to shut up. I'll slap you and send you to the back, baby. We Woo. talked to Andy Kaufman and Jimmy Hart right after it was all over with. And uh, take a listen no, to this. You don't have no respect for hey, you. Miami, look at this, man. Tell him. Tell him, man. Smartest man. <laughs> I am in the locker room at the Mid-South Coliseum with Andy Kaufman and Jimmy, a TV star Andy Kaufman. I will tell you right now, it is not my idea, but we are interested in finding out 
what led to the kind of charade that took place that deprived Lawler of the world at all. Tell me it wasn't a charade. Everybody, you came out. Yeah, he lost it out there. Don't you have anything better to do than to run around trying to no. trying to gig Lawler and bother well, him? Jerry Lawler almost tried to break my neck last year. He made a fool out of me. He humiliated me. He put me in the hospital for three days in traction. I had to wear a neck brace for, for five months. He did this to Jimmy Hart, broke his arm, okay? And so you say, I don't have anything better to do. I won't stop. I'm not stopping now. Look, it gives me great pleasure to know that I had something to do with helping to prevent Jerry Lawler from, from, yeah, from having that, that world title. And I'll tell you, I'm not going to stop now. I won't stop until I find someone who's going to put Jerry Lawler into the hospital just like he did me. And it won't be for any three days. It won't be for a week. It'll be for a month, maybe for a year. Jerry Lawler will not want to go back into professional wrestling when I'm through with him because I'm offering $5,000 to any wrestler that can put him in the hospital. And I'm dead serious about this, ladies and gentlemen. I will not stop until Jerry Lawler is in the hospital. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You just better steer clear of him because he... I would expect as much out of you. Who is the smartest manager in professional wrestling? And why am I? Like I said, man, can't you imagine when Lawler saw him over there? He thought he saw Jimmy Hart with a mask on. Then I jumped on the ring. He fainted. Botwinkle pinned him. Like I said, King, and I use that word loosely, he who laughs last laughs the loudest. <laughs>